Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, I got an email. You got mail. I know, that doesn't happen very often. It was from a game developer. It basically, it said this. Oh, please, sir, review my game. We're trying to get on Steam and we're being greenlit right now. And we need all the exposure we can get. And I was like, okay. You gave me a free game, I'll review it. And that's the story of how I came into possession of Tales of Bingwood. Huh. Well, I had no idea they had music like that back in the early 90s. In particular, 1993. Because that's when development for this game began. It was originally planned to be for the Amiga computer, but then the whole Microsoft Monopoly put a stop to that. Nevertheless, 15 odd years later, the game's released in 2008. Too little to no fanfare. Although it does have a walkthrough on Game Boomers, so that counts for something. Eight years later, the developer wants to take another stab at commercial success for this title by re-releasing it on Steam. So with all that said, folks, let's check this puppy out. Oh no, there's black bars there. Yeah, this game runs in a 4x3 resolution, in particular 640x480. The classic resolution of a lot of games in the early 90s. But here, let me stretch that out for you and your widescreen eyes. Is that better? So anyway, what we're looking at right here is the mandatory tutorial sequence. I know, a mandatory tutorial sequence in an adventure game. Although, it may be a little bit necessary. After all, this game does feature a rather retro interface. You got the whole look, touch, walk, grab icons that you have to manually select in order to, well, do those actions. And while this game does look like it was made using AGS, it wasn't. In fact, it was made using Bug Factory's own proprietary engine, the AWE engine, or AW engine. I'm sure it's an acronym for something, but I don't remember. But either way, it's their own homebrew engine. And I gotta say, it looks pretty cool what they made here. So after dreaming up a mandatory tutorial sequence, our hero wakes up. Huh? What? Guess it's time to get up. You know, I'm pleasantly surprised that this game is fully voice acted. That's something I absolutely did not expect. Also, I do dig the pixel art in this game. It looks different. It looks Amiga-y, if that's even a word. But anyway, our hero gets dressed and begins to advance the plot. With the blessing of their majesties, the king and queen. What's going on? What did I miss? You should have been here in time. The royal proclamations are always proclaimed at midday. Yeah, well, my alarm didn't go off. Uh, yes, this kid has a little bit of that early 90s tood in him. Who are you anyway? My name is Tom. Tom Brandt Driftwood. Driftwood? Why does that sound familiar? Mm-hmm. They're very subtle there, game. Yeah. Tales of Bingwood is chock full of references and punny names. Not that there's anything wrong with it, it's just what it does. But anywho, after meeting a bunch of characters that we're gonna meet throughout the game, we are told what the hell this game's about. It's Princess Liliana! What? She's been nabbed by the evil wizard. And of all the days, it's the king's and queen's anniversary! It is quite peculiar. I know who's ever heard of an evil wizard kidnapping a princess. Apparently not our hero, because this news is so shocking to him that he proceeds to black out. So our hero boldly passes out into chapter one. And the game's done a good job of establishing what we're gonna do. Or as our hero puts it, Blah blah blah. Blah blah. Blah. Save the princess and get the reward. And the reward is your typical fairy tale stuff. Our 12 year old boy here will get the princess's hand in marriage. And no, she does not get a say in the matter. She's property of her father, after all. And speaking of property, the boy will also get half the kingdom, which sounds like a terrible idea. After all, that's how you end up with places like the Holy Roman Empire. So anyway, now that we got our vague main quest out of the way, let's go ahead and play this game. And who would have guessed that a game that began its development in the early 90s plays like a game that was released in the early 90s? And what I mean by that is that this game has a bit of an open world structure in the sense that you're not really given any direction. You kind of just have to find stuff, then do the stuff. And all that stuff builds towards your main objective, even though it doesn't seem that connected to it. But it is, somehow. It's hard to describe, 
But to say the least, if you want any success in games like this, you pick up everything that isn't nailed down, and you talk to every character. And in some cases, the characters will give you some direction. Actually, I've no idea as to how to rescue the princess. Hmm, the wizard lives somewhere beyond the Shady Forest. That's where I would be heading. Shady Forest? Are you serious? I'm sure you'll do well, lad. Alright, I have no idea where the Shady Forest is, but it sounds shady. And apparently our hero doesn't like the sound of that, so it must be kind of sinister. So now we have a clear objective. Figure out how the hell to get to the Shady Forest, once I can figure out where the hell that is. Hmm, maybe this random map I find will help us. Oh hey, this game has a quick travel system. So I imagine that means we're going to, have to do a lot of backtracking. But hey, at least I found the way to the Shady Forest. Although, as you would imagine, it's not as simple as just walking through this gate. Open the gate! I'm on an official princess rescue mission! No doubt you are! Nonetheless, the gate stays closed until the toll has been duly paid! And of course, the toll is an insane amount of money. And this kid has no money, because he's just a fisherman's son who wants to be a pirate. Although, short of the game's own description, he never really brings that up while playing. He just seems to be a fisherman's boy who's going to save a princess. Hmm. I can see why maybe their marketing department wasn't so great at Bug Factory. And the same goes for this poor old dude's gatekeeping skills. All we gotta do is walk around him to get past him. Whoa! The bridge! It's really gone! How am I supposed to get the Shady Forest now? I don't know. We talked to the construction workers and they're like, Yo, the evil wizard blew it up. We can't really do anything about it, so we're just hanging out here. And by the way, we want some lunch because we're hungry. Anyway, from this point on, I just began to fill out the map and talk to every character I encountered. For the most part, they're all fine, the characters. They serve to help our protagonist. They're not exactly fleshed out or anything. There's nothing really wrong with that. They're all pleasantly cartoony and, yeah, you can obviously tell the same voice actor was used with a lot of these characters. Another valued customer. If it isn't my favoritist fisherman boy in the village... Anywho, I wandered across the map for a while, found a hermit on the top of the hill. How are you this fine day? I'm fabulous, thanks. How are you? In case it was too subtle, I was being sarcastic. Yeah, his audio seems a little bit odd. But speaking of odd sounds, listen to the stuff that's coming out of the inn. Avest me, hearties. Do you think this could possibly be a reference to a much more popular adventure game? But which one, though? Oh, I can't quite put my finger on it. Got it! Alone in the Dark 2! Charming crowd. Please, don't harass the customers! Arr, just some buggly banter. Bring us another jug of rum, won't you, lass? As you can imagine, we gotta do something about this situation. After all, we're a 12 year old boy, so clearly we can take on some murdering and menacing pirates. Or it could just be that we need to help the innkeeper because she used to be the captain of the ship that the pirates are on, then she quit to open up an inn, and now they no longer respect her because she owns an inn, so we need to get an item for her so she can earn the respect of the pirates again. Yeah, that all makes perfect sense. <laughs> Weird how quickly these pirates lost the respect for their former captain. It's strange. But anywho, she gives us a treasure map that we need to follow to dig up her buried treasure, which I guess will prove to these pirates that she's still a badass. Okay, makes perfect sense. Let's go to Treasure Island and check it out. The map has several lines of instructions, starting from the rocks. Let's see. Take three steps west. One, two, three. And what's next? Oh no! Ah crap, now what we're gonna do. Surely not just click in the middle of the screen with a shovel and see him uncover the whole island. Hey, that's a practical solution to a lost map. The shovel just hit something! Let's see. It's the chest! Well, I'd better put all this back then. Which our hero proceeds to do. Then he hightails it over to the inn, where the innkeeper comes out because she instinctively knows that he has a chest on him. 
Oh well. I guess she has to do it. Otherwise, she wouldn't have a dramatic entrance. Sorry, me patience is running thin with those pirate vermin. Here's the chest! Thanks, this should do it. Would you mind turning around for a second? No problem. Yeah, she buried her more piratey looking getup on that island for some reason, rather than keeping it in her wardrobe, which would make sense. But oh well, now that she's a confirmed badass pirate, again, I guess, she's gonna kick some ass. It's time to feed the fish. <laughs> Skewer your gizzards, you parent loving sea dogs. Prepare for your doom, you lily livered cracking spawn. I'll hang you by the gibbet, you pox face swines. I'll cut you in pieces, you yellow bellied bloatish. Sounds like it's over. I have to admit, I found this game to be incredibly charming. Ah, let's see what the carnage looks like. You showed them, all right. After an honest, civilized discussion, we finally reached an agreement. They was looking forward to visiting again next year. It's nice how things just work out. Now, all this is well and good and certainly very humorous. But there is a practical reason for making sure that the innkeeper beats up the pirates. For starters, it will grant us a couple of key items that we don't know are key until we know they're key. Yeah, welcome to early 90s adventure gaming. We get some free lunch vouchers, which seem utterly useless right now. And also, we get a mug. Two key items that we're going to need if we're going to beat this game. Although we don't know it yet, because we haven't gotten to the point where these items are useful. So... Yeah, let's keep wandering around until we find more adventure. Whoa, what's this? It's total darkness. Anybody in here? I think we might find Zack McCracken. But nevertheless, it's clearly too dark for us to venture further. We're gonna need to find a light source. Oh yeah, do you remember those construction workers from earlier? Yeah, they said they were hungry, so I figured if I give them the free lunch tickets, maybe i get something out of it? I don't know, I'm just kind of blundering my way through this game right now. You can have these. Hey, thanks! Very generous of you! Oh my god, that's a terrible Cheech Martin impression. But anyway, they leave now, and I dig a hole in the ground. I have no idea why I'm doing this. I need to find some direction. Maybe I should go talk to the king. But oh no, the guards won't let us into the castle. So I say, hey, I'm going to deliver some fish for the king. And they're like, okay, you can get by now. So I do some fishing, which involves some light puzzling. It's not too difficult. And then return to the guards with my caught fish. Oh, by the way, this boy is allergic to fish. And he's a fisherman's son, and I guess also a fisherman. So he has to wear these rubber gloves to handle fish. <laughs> yeah, it's a comedy. And speaking of comedy, now that we're inside the castle, we need to distract the guard because, well, I need like a plant out of this flower bed. So I'm gonna put some laxative into the fountain. You'll see what happens. I'll sprinkle the powder in the fountain. This armor is so hot! I need a drink! That's better! Oops! Gotta go! Hmm. Now that I think about it, I really don't need them. No, but we need these purple flowers over here for reasons that will become clear later. But still, we need to talk to the king because the king's gonna fill us in on all the major plot points. Go on through. Tom Brad Driftwood, the fisherman's son. Oh, what a fancy effect. Well, I heard about the kidnapping. 
and I would like to help in any way I can. That's very nice of you, Tom. Yeah, Queen, you sound so damn sincere. Well, anyway, the king's floating up in the sky because, well, how about he just explain the story to you? It was at the breakfast table when I first knew I was in deep trouble. And that's when you slayed the dragon and rescued me from the tower. You look so handsome in your polished armor. I just can't believe it's been 40 years already, to a day. Pretty neat, the king gets his own floating head. But anyway, in typical sitcom fashion, the king forgot about his anniversary. So, desperate times call for desperate measures. I slipped away to make hasty arrangements for a ball. I also went down to the armory to look out my old suit of armor. It should polish up nicely. I'll put it on and look at myself in the mirror. And, and, uh, I'll have to lose some weight before this evening. So I skipped the lunch and went to run a few laps around the castle. Needless to say, it didn't work out. So that's when he called for the evil wizard because he didn't want to wear a corset or just get a bigger pair of armor. Oh well. I need to lose weight before this evening. I can do that for a thousand gold crowns. <laughs> that is far too much! So they go back and forth for a while, and eventually some magic shenanigans ensue. Very well! When the wizard was done, I was just as fat as before, but much lighter. The task is done. I have removed all your weight. And now, the matter of my fee? This is not what I wanted, and you know it! And then some more magical magic magicness magics. I'll not pay you a rusty groat! In that case, I'll just take my payment myself. Many years ago, when the castle was first built, my great-great-great-grandfather had the foresight to install a spell-proof treasury. The evil wizard's spell was deflected into the air, where it dissipated in smoke and foul odors. I don't know what it is about these graphics, but my god, they are charming and adorable and really take me back to my teen agent days. Ah, <sighs> nostalgia. So the evil villain proceeds to seal the safe shut with some ice because he can't get inside of it. And it's never referenced again. But oh well, we now know all the nitty gritty details of what happened. The Keen is a fat ass and he didn't want to do Jenny Craig. So he brought over an evil wizard and was shocked when the evil wizard did something evil to him. Now his daughter's gone. No! Keep your filthy hands off! <laughs> This will cover the payment I require. Consider yourself lucky, your highness. Well, now that we know all the nitty gritty details, we can proceed to try to solve more puzzles and hope they connect to the overarching plot. The water flow stopped. The cement must have clogged the pipes. All I need is some fine-grained sand to complete the mixture. Yeah, we're vandalizing this fountain for an item. This should do it. Whoa! That's some quick-drying concrete for sure! Let's see. That didn't sound too good. Uh, oops. It's perfectly shaped. I don't want to think about what this will do to my pocket lining. What a 
in the name of the king is going on here? There are going to be some serious consequences! When the king hears about this... That was close. Just because a man has to poop doesn't mean he's gonna forget about who did this, dude. <sighs> Our hero might be an idiot. But oh well. We had to do this because the miller needed a new millstone so we could mill down some stuff. Yeah. I guess all this seems really out of place because believe it or not, I don't think I played this game in the proper order. I just kind of brute forced my way through a bunch of puzzles, not really knowing why I was doing what I was doing. The big mistake I made was that I didn't thoroughly talk to the hermit on the top of the hill because it turns out he is an essential quest giver that will give you direction and purpose and meaning and essentially he'll give you the big main sub quest that you need. And I didn't find this out until now it was like three-fourths of the way done with the game. To think this game could have made a whole lot more sense to me if I talked to this guy sooner. Take a look! Now we have direction. Make a big ass slingshot. Sling yourself into the woods, cause it won't kill you or anything. This looks like something I can handle. Can I keep this? Sure! Thanks! So we talked to the sage who's like a wizard nature or something like that. Lawful good, no doubt. I could use some help with a tree-related problem. How can I be of assistance? Well, let me show you the rough draft. Only thing is, the spot where this contraption is needed is devoid of trees. I see. Perhaps there indeed is something I can do. If you don't mind locating some ingredients for me. Oh, right. Welcome to the rest of the game. Let's just find a bunch of items, throw it into a pot, and then build a slingshot. Well, this makes a whole lot more sense. And fortunately for me, by this point in the game, I had already acquired the majority of the items necessary. There was just a few things here and there that I was missing. So one of the things I was missing was an encounter with a hobgoblin, which is an excellent band name. But it turns out Arnie the Smith knows all about hobgoblins. So we have a lovely chat with him. About the hobgoblins? What do you know about them? Everybody knows they love gold and hate iron. So Arnie proceeds to make us a talisman that's going to ward off goblins, which is going to be very convenient once we encounter a goblin, which we do on the beach, rather by happenstance. But as you would imagine, there's a step before we meet the hobgoblin that I'm overlooking. In particular, the fact that we need to get some bellows for the smith. Well, we just can't up and buy them because we got no money. So instead, the shopkeeper's like, yo, 12-year-old, go rough up this chef who owes me money. And of course, the chef doesn't take us seriously. But the moment we put on some funny glasses, he thinks we're a grown-ass man and forks over the loot. Excuse me? Huh? Who are you? What do you want? I is here to collect the fee for exotic spices. That would be 20 silver crowns, thank you. Ah, I see. I was just on my way to see Angus personally. But you have saved me the trip. Yeah, this only works because the chef is a raging dumbass. Oh my god, my suspension of disbelief has been suspended. But oh well, let's fast forward to the part where we meet the hobgoblin, just right after the chef attempts to murder us. Phew, that was close. I feel that strange tingling sensation again. Whoa! How could I have missed that path into the forest before? Yeah, that's a path to the hobgoblin's house. I don't know if you need the talisman in order to open it or not. But sure enough, we encounter a hobgoblin as soon as we give it a fish. Because that's what hobgoblins eat, apparently. Hmm. I was expecting a bit more. Achoo! What was that? Blast it! He was so close to Dalton and given up. I suppose it can be helped now. Wow, you're an actual hobgoblin? Yeah, yeah. What be the big deal? Well, the big deal is we need a piece of his house, but the hobgoblin's not going to give up the goose without us solving some riddles, which I don't solve because I don't think they're solvable. So instead, more direct action is required. Ah. 
I'll just grab that piece of mushroom and be on my way. I'm sure that won't come back and bite us in the ass. Just like throwing rocks at this goat surely won't cause us any problems. Phew. So we give a ram a concussion and get an acorn for our trouble. And hey, remember that spooky cave from earlier? I got a light source somehow now, so let's go check it out. Awkward blocky pixels, primitive sloping foreheads. These must be very old indeed. References. So we get a key from a raven, which we use to unlock a shed, which gains us a rope. And pretty much we now have everything we need. Because I already acquired all the items to make the potion. And in fact, it's already hanging out in my inventory. Sorry, this isn't a walkthrough, I guess. But oh well, now that all we need to do is just watch the magic unfold. Now that's impressive! Oh, if you think that's impressive, you're in for a treat. Yeah, this is just what I need. All of a sudden, I'm feeling a bit nervous. It's so beautiful up here! I can even see the wizard's gate blooming in the horizon! Maybe I'll fly all the way there! Huh? Maybe not! And he's dead, which is why there was never a chapter two. Oh, no, he's fine. Maybe. I don't know, it's kind of vague. That wasn't so bad. I'm still in one piece, at least. Yikes! That's me lying on the ground! Oh no, something is coming this way! Wake up, Tom! This is no time to take a nap! Wake up! To be continued for eight long years. Well, eight years plus now. Because unless this game sells well on Steam, there may never be a chapter two. So Tom here will remain in purgatory forever. We'll never know if he lives or dies. We'll never know if he gets the princess. And yeah, that does it, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. What do I think about this game? It's fine. It's an early 90s game. Nothing wrong about that. The plot's not the most intricate. It's really all about the puzzles here, which is why I edited the majority of them out. It seems like I'm just going to give up the goose if I explain every puzzle. And also, that's the fun of this game. You just wander around this map. Find puzzles, solve them, and you can safely assume that every time you solve a puzzle, you're going to work closer towards your goal. Although I do admit this free flow and design choice kind of led me to go without guidance for a good chunk of the game, but I still had fun. I still enjoyed it, and I think if this game's on Steam for under $10, I will gladly pick it up and gladly recommend it, because it's a fun little adventure game. If you liked early 90s adventure games, you should adore this. And if you don't, well then maybe this game's not for you. But nevertheless, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between that does it for me. If you want to help this game get on Steam, there's links down below. If not, or if you do, either way. A good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. I'm out of here. Subscribe! Uh... Subscribe!